Hi, it's Nicole, and today I'll be doing my January wrap-up. January was a really good reading month for me, not in small part because of some of the projects that I've been doing, like Indie Press Project and Invisible Cities. And thanks to those projects, I have talked about most of these books already, so I'm not going to go too far into detail with um, those ones. I read two books in French in January, and that uh, was really great for me because my goal this year uh, with my French reading is to read five books in French. Maybe I'll be able to surpass that. I mean, this makes it look like that's possible, um, but I am a lot slower we're reading in French, so we'll see. The first book that I read in January was Hushuma, Corps et Sexualité au Maroc by Zeynab Fasiki. I talked about that already. The next book that I read in January is actually from my shelves, The Establishment and How They Get Away With It by Owen Jones, but I listened to it on audiobook from Scribd. Mostly I was listening to it while I was on my morning walk. I think it's a fantastic book. Going into it, I think it's worth knowing this is not about the establishment generally in the world and I think it's good that it's not because it's able to focus a lot more it's about the establishment mainly in Britain and it talks about links with countries like the US for example quite a lot uh, and also links with Europe and that's just because those are the strongest links that the UK has it's not to suggest that um, these are the only um, aspects of establishment all other countries have no power and blah blah, blah. It, it, that's not at all <laughs> the suggestion in the least and there is clearly an establishment in every country every context has has that um but this is focusing on Britain and I think it was good that he did that because that is his expertise and also it was able to really focus on an area and you can see how these things um could relate to other contexts as well so when you see how things are set up uh, in one country like Britain you can relate that to other countries, although the systems might be slightly different. So I think it was really interesting, in particular for me, to get that extra um, deep dive into British establishment and knowing some of the players that he's talking about, but I also don't know all of them. And so it was interesting for him to talk about people that I don't know about. But I don't think that focus on Britain makes it inaccessible to other people. I think that the way he talks about everything and the way that he talks about the people involved and everything, you don't have to really know that much going into it um, about the situation in the UK. I think on the whole it is very accessible and I thought he did a fantastic job. And it actually pairs well with another book that I finished later in the month called How to Be an Anti-Capitalist in the 21st Century. That is a fantastic book. It really is the closest that you can get, I feel, to a blueprint method of how to um, get past uh, this capitalist um, system that we're in now and go beyond to something that is a little bit more refined and human focused and um, just works better for more people, you know? And I felt like this book really lays the groundwork for that. Like, without being prescriptive, it gave loads of alternatives, um, loads of options. It explained how these options need to, in a lot of instances, work in tandem. It's not about just choosing this one thing and everyone must do this one thing. It's about understanding the way that all of these different players work together. For example, I find a lot of the time the left is at odds with itself because we have people who are very anti-establishment and um, want almost an anarchist approach. We have other people who feel that it is possible to change things from within and we need to have more like-minded people in government to help change things either gradually or just to overturn things, use the system against itself, all of that stuff. And these people need to not work so separately. They need to, I feel, come together and understand that the goal is the same, even though the methods are very different, and even though they might differ on uh, their opinions about uh, systems and whatnot, I think overall it's still the same wheelhouse and it's still fighting the same problems, and so I thought that the way that he brings things, these things together was very good, and the, his analysis of the situation, his analysis of the problem, everything I, I thought was just fantastic. I feel like this book kind of, um, gets at what my general politics is, are. <laughs> Other books that I read in the month were Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez, translated by this person. L'étrange affaire du pantalon de Dalsukin by Fouad Larui, which I read in French, and Astral Season, Beastly Season by Tahi Sayate, translated by Kalau Almoni. All of those books I've done at least kind of a mini review for, so I will have 
in the description box links to any reviews that I've done for those video for those books. I don't really have that much else to say about them. I mean, I do because I always do. Um, but I think what I said in the reviews still stands for me. So, yeah. I hope the rest of the year is equally as good as this month has been or even better. <laughs> Dare we hope for that? Um, and I also hope that I get around to incorporating more movies into my um, Invisible Cities uh, participation as well because there were a lot of movies that I wanted to get to last month but I was finding difficulty with accessibility <sighs> uh, which is really irritating um, but hopefully that won't be such an issue this month but we'll see and if there's anything else um, that'll be in a video in future I guess. <laughs> That's all for now though and I'll see you again next time. Bye!